So besides using the dB scale to express gain, the difference in level between two sounds, what if you wanted to use this convenient decibel scale to express the absolute level of a sound? Well, since a dB measurement is always a ratio, using dBs to express the specific level of a sound wave is done by comparing the level of the sound to a reference level. There are several different dB level scales you run into in recording and mixing, but remember, since they all use the same dB measurements, a particular change in level is the same number of decibels in any of these scales. If you want to measure the level of sound waves in the air, you'll be measuring sound pressure level, or SPL, so a particular loudness level would be expressed as dB-SPL. The reference is the quietest sound human hearing can perceive. This is called the threshold of perception, and in the dB-SPL scale, it's zero dB-SPL. All other dB-SPL levels are relative to this, how much louder than zero dB-SPL the sound is. Humans can perceive a very wide range of levels, using linear measurement scales over a trillion to one ratio. In dB-SPL, this translates to about 120 dB. The actual level of approximately 120 dB-SPL is referred to as the threshold of pain. That's the level at and above which we perceive sound as painful and are in imminent danger of hearing damage. This range, 120 dB between the threshold of perception and the threshold of pain, is the dynamic range of human hearing. To put these levels in some context, two people talking face to face probably hear each other at a level of around 50 to 60 dB SPL or so, depending on how quietly or how loudly they're speaking and how close together they're standing. Live acoustic music can range from 30 or 40 dB SPL in quiet sections up to about 100 dB SPL or so. Amplified music can be even louder. Levels in the subway can easily hit and exceed the threshold of pain. Again, I'll talk more about the limitations of human hearing in a later tutorial. Many engineers recommend setting the average listening levels in the studio, especially when mixing, to approximately 83 dB SPL, more or less. Since long-term exposure to continuous high sound pressure levels can gradually ruin your hearing, this is very good advice. You can take a measurement like this with a simple SPL meter, available inexpensively through places like Radio Shack, or even as an app for your iPhone or smartphone. Now, once a sound wave in the air is picked up by a microphone, the air pressure variations are converted to analog voltage variations. These can range from a few millivolts up to several volts, and these levels are also expressed in decibels. But here, things are a little less clear-cut. There's more than one reference in use when expressing the level of electrical analog audio waves, and this can sometimes cause a little confusion. When using professional and semi-pro audio equipment, the reference level is 1.23 volts. But this is not the lowest possible level, like with the dBSPL reference. Instead, it's the highest average level a steady audio signal can have, excluding any sudden transient peaks in the wave, like when a hammer hits a piano string, causing a momentary clunk at the beginning of the note. This maximum average level is the voltage reference for the dB scale for professional audio gear, the dBU scale, it's with a small u. This reference level is not labeled 0 dBU. Instead, for reasons I won't get into now, it's plus 4 dBU. This is the standard operating level for pro audio. Steady audio levels encountered in recording and mixing range from well below minus 60 dBU up to plus 4 dBU, and momentary transient peaks can go as much as 20 dB higher. This is the dynamic range of analog audio. If audio levels exceed the maximum level the equipment can handle, the shape of the wave is not preserved accurately. It's clipped or distorted. With older analog recording systems, like tape and vinyl, the dynamic range of the recording medium was less than the 120 dB range of human hearing, or the range of live acoustic music, especially a full orchestra. That's why audio compression was originally invented, to make the dynamic range of music fit into the more limited dynamic range of the recording media of the time. Nowadays, digital recording media are capable of a much wider dynamic range, but ironically, we use much less of this dynamic range than is available. So when you see the specs of a piece of audio gear and it says it operates at plus 4 dBU, that means it's designed to pass audio at the standard professional level and should be able to interface well with any other piece of pro audio gear out there. But consumer audio gear is designed to operate at a slightly lower average level with a different reference level of only 1 volt and a lower standard operating level using a slightly different dB scale, the dBV scale. That's with a capital V. The consumer standard operating level is minus 10 dBV, 
and because of the different reference voltage, it's not 14 dB lower, but 11.8 dB lower than Pro Audio Gear. Now that's enough of a difference in level to potentially cause problems running audio signals between Pro or Semi-Pro gear and consumer gear. Since DAW interfaces might operate at either Pro or consumer level, it's important to check the specs and avoid any mismatches when setting up the studio. If there is a mismatch, small utility boxes are available to properly match operating levels between Pro and consumer gear for the best sound quality. I'll finish this discussion of the various dB level scales in the next tutorial.